Sethi. Uh, so uh, we have the top two agenda items on the list. Uh, the first one is a follow up on the donation of the ACM PCA Assure plugin from the uh, from the personal GitHub account, and that's what we uh, talked about during last last bi biweekly meeting. So I have my colleagues in here, uh, and Micah, thanks thanks for joining. Uh, so Micah was there last week as well, uh, and I have Kyle and uh, Brandy from our team from Amazon's side. Uh, so me, Kyle, and Brandy actually work on ACM Private CA team, uh, and uh, Micah is on our uh, Kubernetes uh, side of uh, teams. Great. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So I'm sorry, we, we haven't really moved forward for the last two weeks. I'm sorry about that because we are, we've had this uh, application in so with our like Venify legal team to because as part of donating the project to the CNCF, we have also donate all the trademarks and whatever. There are no trademarks, but they're trying to get clarity on uh, like because it's all obviously set managers all over our copy and uh, website, and so we're trying to get some clarity on what terms can and can't be used. So it's a bit, as far as I'm aware, our CTO has a meeting like where they're going to try and thrash this out this week. <laughs> but we can probably, in the meantime, like we can we can still try and move forward with what we would do once we know we can. <laughs> Yeah, quick question from this is Micah. Um, uh, quick question on that: Do we do we need a block on that? Just because there are other repositories in the Cert Manager GitHub org that have the Cert Manager text on it, does that need to block? Uh, like the Jetstack Cert Manager donation need to block on this this uh, issuer plugin? Um, no, but I, I think one of the actions from last time was to like start. To, was to start thinking about what processes we would need, right? And that hasn't, that just hasn't progressed. <laughs> gotcha, okay. Um, yeah, the other do you, thing. Do you, do you oh, all yeah. need an introduction to Chris? Do you know Chris um, to, uh, as far as questions about like donating projects to like existing projects for to CNCF projects? Um, yeah, I think we. I'm. I, I know of them rather than know them. <laughs> so yeah, I think it would be good to good to have a quick intro meeting. Okay. The yeah, other thing I can... you talked about was the like security process, right? We don't have any processes, and we should probably work out what we need. Yeah. As far as the donation side, um, who can you? I'm on mobile, but can you add to the notes just any contacts that I would need to connect with Chris about any questions for donation? meeting notes yeah it's um matt vades our cto and james westby our product manager but there there is also a thread in so there's, there's a project in the cert manager like jetstack cert manager like github if you go to projects like move to move repo and there's a ticket link there from the cncf onboarding repo and there's a discussion is happening in there So you can follow the kind of issue trail. OK, great. Um, one more thing was that we just we talked about like, internally the at the project you suggested. The, because it's it's not by anyone at uh, AWS, right? The sample project you linked. That's or exactly it? right. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a community member who's who's created it, and we'd like to help maintain it, but um, just would like to to put that in a CNCF uh, project. Yeah. So, so I mean, we thought we looked at it, and it's got very little like t testing, and we weren't sure. So it would we'd need some maintainers to to uh, take a look at it and make it more uh, kind of yeah production ready and blessed i guess as part of and i would have to write down what we actually like to actually clarify what we mean by that in a, some kind of policy but we wouldn't like i think just we had a look at it and it's like this it wouldn't be uh, something that we'd accept just like as it is does anyone 
everyone uh, understand? <laughs> what what so what specifically would you like to see before it's it's added as like or it, it's uh adopted as a project then um there's the conformance test i don't know if that if it already passes those like the external issuer conformance tests i think and then i guess maybe like some kind of end-to-end -end tests for it itself Yeah, I think um, from my perspective, just like um, some kind of smoke test to make sure it deploys, installs correctly, and can issue something. I think in terms of the conformance suite stuff, um, that's a tricky one. And I think that's a larger discussion, but shouldn't necessarily gate this. Because, um, yeah, there's questions around whether some issues could be conform in any way to that particular suite. So, um, yeah, I think that should be gated. But, yeah, definitely some kind of yeah, smoke test to deploy it. It does a thing. Um, should be there. Is my feeling. And, and, okay, in so addition, just sorry. Go, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, um, I think you did mention this last time was uh, assistance with being able to run those tests in some capacity. Certainly, specifically with PCA, there's obviously a pretty large monthly charge for it, and per se, it's quite expensive. Um, so we probably need some sort of assistance to be able to run a test that will actually issue us uh, from PCA. Yeah, we definitely would want to help with that. Is Do you see that as a gating feature to donating the project, though, or gating uh, like a, a blocking uh, part of this project? Like we would want to write the tests, but as like, can we, I'm, what I'm asking is, can we get the, you know, the finances and the like, AWS account or whatever, you know, and AWS account credits sorted out after the donation or just as long as the tests are in place um, before donating the project. Does that make sense? Yeah, my, my questions are just, what are the what are the blocking items for donating the project itself? Because we want to help make this happen, but I just am trying to get a clear idea of, of the amount of work slash time it's going to take to get it there. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> the answer is I don't know. So I know I like, we run periodic tests like every four hours. We run the entire end to end test suite on Sam Azure. I don't know if that would be necessary for all external issues, but maybe we would want to at least be running them periodically at maybe less less period, less often than every four hours, but I don't know I don't know. <laughs> I guess we don't actually because we don't have any AWS testing infrastructure at all, we would actually not even really be able to try it out as such, I guess. So I guess this is an opportunity to introduce Ash, who is a prospective Google Summer of Code student. Um, I put an issue on our just our normal issue tracker, GitHub issue tracker, saying that we actually we want to test certain Azure on more clouds. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so there's a there'll be a project coming up soon to uh, yeah deploy Cert Manager on various managed Kubernetes, which would include EKS, obviously, and run end-to-end -end tests. So yeah, well, but any... this, uh, you're talking about Cert Manager here. You guys are talking about some other project, right? We're just talking about setting up the test infrastructure on different clouds as such. Because currently we're only testing on GCP, GKE, that is. Yeah, we'd, we'd obviously love to help with that on the AWS side. Um, it, I was, yeah, if we don't have a great idea in this meeting of what exactly like is needed for donation of the project. Um, that's, that's fine. I just would, it'd be great to get an answer for that maybe by next time or just have a, a list of things that are needed for it, not just necessarily this project, but maybe projects in general. Um, like you're saying, you know, the end to end test, uh, conformance test or integration test or whatever, whatever kind of testing it is. Um, yeah, I guess then the action is we should talk to Chris Sanjay. I mean, you, you can, if you if we be kind kind enough to put us in touch. <laughs> yep, I can do that. Just like 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. I was Go just ahead. wondering, like, what's your say? What's what would be like your commitment to like contribute to the project? I don't know if the original author would like would they be interested to remain a maintainer and basically like spend like certain amount of time working on it and like someone from your side as well? Would it be like? Is it? I mean, I don't know how much how much work there is still needed. Like, are there, you know, is there like are there still upcoming features or is it kind of more or less already stable or? How much work would it require and like who would be interested in working on it? Yeah, I know the original maintainer is interested in in staying on as a maintainer. Um, and then we at AWS would obviously be very interested in investing in that continuously. And what it, in addition to testing and you know adding new features as as ACM supports them. Makes sense. Sorry, sorry I, I didn't hear. Uh, is the original author still interested in maintaining? Yeah, sorry. Yes. Uh, yes, that's correct. Missed. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so we've got we've got we've got, a, got an action or a couple of actions. We'll talk to we'll we'll get set up a meeting with Chris and then we'll try and work out like what things that we want to do to accept a <laughs> to accept a uh, project, and yeah, apologies again. It's not really moved on our side. <laughs> yeah, I guess we can do something similar to what Terraform does. Does they have like a list of requirements, and then they run peri periodic tests on the external Terraform providers. So we could just offer a page that says what we expect from the external issuer to be doing and what are the steps to get the uh, testing set up for you so that the conformance tests pass. Uh, yeah, that, that we should have done that, I guess, in the past two weeks, but we didn't. <laughs> Sorry for that. So we'll do that. Awesome. Thank, thanks for doing that. We appreciate that. Great. OK. Any, anyone else have anything they'd like to add to the 3675? Cool. I guess then we can move on to the next follow up, which is going to be very similar, I reckon. The, 3761, which is a documented security issue reporting response distribution process. Yeah, this is, yeah, like you said, very similar. I think um, just question from, from me is, um, and this might, you know, be blocking somewhat on the, the, the jet stack cert manager donation, but is, is the cert manager dot, IO domain, is that currently managed by Jetstack or is that part of the, I guess, I'm guessing that that is currently managed by Jetstack. Yeah. yeah, but as part of the handover, the domain will be transferred to CNCF. Okay, it's in, great. It's in, the, it's in the long handover threads that has been dragging on. Okay, so yeah, it, that, that might just need to block a little bit on that, but at least, well, I guess the, 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 the security index aspect of it could um yeah, yeah that's that's fine and we, we did actually we did actually in the last couple of weeks do a bit of visibility changing on our mailing lists because we're a part of another project we wanted anyone to be able to email the site manager maintainers so we do actually have a point of contact it's just not publicized anywhere <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that would be that would be even if it's whatever the intermediate before you know the handover is complete. Like if that was added to just the read, you know, the main project readme and a few GitHub issue templates and stuff. Yeah, um, that would be super helpful. Just so that if anyone does find an issue, it, it's very clear where to report it at minimum before we get to a distribution list or anything like that. I could uh, take that as an action to do within the next week or so. I can add at least a, an email address to the website and to the readme. Add a security.md file or something to the repo. I'm, That'd be I'm awesome. Quite interested in this sort of area, so I'll, I'll uh, take that on. Add it as a task for myself. Thanks, Ashley. But yeah, we do have a public 
publicly emailable address. It's just not publicly publicized. <laughs> Um, yeah, any, anything else? Nothing for me. Yeah, I'm good as well. Thank you so much for answering all of our questions. This was very helpful. Yeah, thank you for joining as well. And yeah, we, we need to kick, kick it forward a bit more quickly. <laughs> I think some people are on leave, I think, as well. So it's a little bit uh, slow. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's the end of the issues from the AWS side. You can save. You can stay if you like, but we'll we'll continue on to our uh, other agenda items. If that's okay. So the next one is uh, certificate request approved denied conditions. This is from Josh Shrink. Yep, that's from me. Um, yeah, I just wanted to shout out that I. Um... Yeah, a lot of the conversations that are going on in pull requests are getting basically quite unwieldy. Um, so I have PR'd in um, all of the approved denied conditions stuff against the original different request design document. Um, so that should be the correct pull request. Um, and I was like, oh, it would be a couple hundred words <laughs> maximum. <laughs> and it ended up turning into this whole thing. But um, so hopefully now all of those, all of the behavior is quite well documented now. Um, and at least this is a good place to kind of discuss, um, yeah, the behavior itself and the APIs and such. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out, uh, that exists now, um, to have a read um, and have a look at. Um, yeah, I'm still going to be continuing to, you know, write code in the background of it. Um, but yeah, the code is basically based off of, yeah, everything inside this design document. Um, that's all right. For context, if, if people haven't got any, the uh, 1.3 release is going to have a uh, alpha policy engine. Uh, well, ho well, hopefully, anyway, if it gets finished in, and merged in time. So we've got we have to add new conditions to certificate requests, rather than just issued and pending. We've also got approved and denied. And this is part of the work that means that we can more align with the upstream Kubernetes certificate request. Yep. Um, the, yeah, got distracted by other things today, including this. So I'm running out of keyboard time to get that approver project pushed. But hopefully, I might have some time today, maybe, um, to push some code um, so I can reference that somewhere else and people can start having a look at it. Um, but at least, yeah, if you saw my message yesterday, it at least worked <laughs> on a local uh, branch in the two different projects. Um, yeah. Yeah, I also saw a message where there's like eight pull requests in a row to review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could have put the wall on one pull request, you know, that would be, <laughs> definitely would have been worse. Yeah. Uh, Josh, if you want to. Uh, grab me at some point over in the next couple of days and sort of maybe walk me through one of the ones that I've not commented on. Like I, I'm happy to spend some time reviewing them if it'll help you get unblocked. It's just I lack some of the context on some of the things that you're changing being being new. So the offer's there if you want help with those. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe the subject access review one would be quite good. Um, that touches quite a few different places. Um, sure. Yeah, cool. It just just ping me um, whenever I'm free. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Anything, anything else on the policy and certificate request? That you think uh, we no. <laughs> no, get in there. Kind of want to do something else in my life now. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're getting there. Um, when was the deadline for one three, or when's the proposed deadline? A April the eighth, was it? Was that yes. for an alpha? Yeah, yeah the eighth. Okay. Uh, I, I put it at the top of the document so that we can have the date like always uh -huh. there. Yes. <laughs> good. Yeah, that's good. 
Do we do all for release? Like now at some point? I guess it's not like a good time now because. As, 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 I think if we can merge some of the policy things in a way that it's working, that's when we'll. That's when we want to do an alpha release. Yeah, hopefully. Well, to be fair, I think we could probably do one now. To be honest, um, all of the PRs so far have hopefully been sort of quite self-contained. Um, they're only additive, um, okay. so hopefully it should be okay. We can set. We can set on uh, Friday morning then if we want to do a alpha release then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. And then yeah, that'll be Ashley's first time experiencing a set round release. Doing regular alphas will also help me because um, currently, like uh, referencing from file in the Go module um, in the policy approval project. Can you reference? You can reference alphas, right, from Go modules. That's the thing. Yeah, you can re you yeah. can reference any commit, or you can even replace and reference file system. Uh, so I can just do master, right? That's the thing. Yeah, although I'd probably reference a specific commit. Mm, okay. Cool. I'm not sure why I felt you couldn't do that. Anything else on uh, then? Any any other 1.3 issues that anyone wants to bring up? There's the revision history limit one. Which, uh, we need to make a decision on. Um, oh, uh, where is the link for it? Um, Richard made a stern but very fair comment <laughs> <laughs> at the end. Um, so, yeah, we need to make a decision on that. Does it just need another review, or? Um, I think the code's okay, at least. I think that's the impression I got from Richard, but it's the the faults, basically. Um, right. Yeah. And this is because people that use a crazy, issue a crazy amount of certificates have blown up their etcd clusters with the amount of history that we keep. Is that correct? Yeah. And um, but basically, the, the crux of the problem is, is that we weren't doing the right thing. We weren't doing the, doing the right thing post 1.0. So to do the right thing now, like, we can't do a break and change, basically, is the kind of crux of it. But then it's a philosophical conversation about what is a break and change. And the, um, yeah. yeah. Richard did make a good point that um, if you set the default to 1.0, it means that only new certificates that are created will have a revision quest, revision history of one, which is probably fine. And existing certificates will have it set to nil still. Um, again, whether it's kind of acceptable to be doing that. Okay, I haven't actually had the opportunity to read it, but. This, this week, this whole week is turning into a write-off. <laughs> Apologies. Okay. Anyone, anyone else want to highlight an issue they've been working on, or is it just more well, color alpha on one point? Cut out one point three alpha on Friday with whatever's in. There's oh. on the one that I was working on the self signed issue of DN thing. Um, James Munley commented on it and agreed with Josh's um, concerns about it. And I still don't really see what the concern would be, but I'm quite happy to be outvoted and just change to do what they suggested and uh, raise a Kubernetes event. A warning, I guess, saying, "Yeah, we issued it invalid, so it could blow up in the future." Um, oh, yeah. So yeah. I guess we we have like two separate, like two different views on on this problem. And James Bondoni said that he has in the past seen that defaulting values 
uh, like we're doing, like we're we're like having this magic happening, has had has led to issues, and they've removed it. I wish we could have like a because the conversation is is getting like it's there is a lot happening. Could we have a meeting on this? Honestly, I don't, know to... if it's, I don't know if it's actually worth us corralling everyone into a call just for it. Like, it doesn't seem big enough to be worth. Yeah, that that's that, yeah, that's a good point. Like, like maybe I, you I, could. I, yeah, I would. Yeah. I would like to hear from him his justifications for the things he says. Like, he says. Yeah, that, that's this, exactly this, what I want. He, he yeah. said. He said that he uh, had to remove it in the past, but hasn't justified why he had to do that. And that would be really interesting for me to read because. Uh, as I mentioned in the in the issue, this seemed like a slam dunk, obvious change to me, and I was really surprised that it what it didn't turn out to be that, and that's totally fine. Like I'm I'm happy to be wrong and and learn or to accept that a different approach is preferred. That's totally fine, but because I still don't have that context, I'm still kind of I don't know what the what the next step is there to get me there in my head. But in any case, I'm I'm quite happy to just change that um, and and sort of learn this this uh, different bit, like raise an event, do do that stuff. At the, at the end of the day, we could always do the change that I've um, in the current PR if it turns out to be necessary in the future. And an event is always going to be useful, I think, in this case. Um, so yeah, I, I'm happy to go down that route. I, I, I say I really don't know if it's worth. Spending any any more time on what is effectively quite a minor thing. Uh, no, it is. I don't think it is a minor thing. Unless, like, ex I know the code doesn't seem like a. Does it, it doesn't seem like a big change? Sorry, I have echo from someone. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it seems like a minor thing, but it's a an API behavior that, like. In the future, we might. It's like the a law thing. You decide not to do this kind of change now, and then later in, down the road, we d we do the same decision. Uh, and I am like you. I I need to know. I need to understand. Like because I don't have any uh, much X Bio O nine knowledge. I want to know more about this to understand. So it's not a big deal, but it's still a big deal. Uh, for us to understand, well, fundamentally, the the issue is most things won't validate certs enough that they would reject um, a cert issued like the ones we we are issuing. But the TLS spec does say that you can just reject a connection if the cert being presented isn't invalid. So any TLS library can entirely within spec any time in the future improve their validation and then break any connection using that cert in the future. I've seen similar things happen um, I think in, in a slightly different path. But again, like it's, it's not, this isn't a minor thing. I, th I could see it breaking people, but I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. There's a couple of things there. Like, um, like I think the first thing is that you can always ask James in Slack. Like, um, he's very active in Slack. Um, so you can always ask him a quick question. But I think, like, I think I mentioned it in the comments. Like, I don't think we should be restrictive on what people use the software for. That makes sense. Like, people might not even be using it for TLS, right? Like, it might be a valid reason to be signing these certificates. Um, and again, I think setting like the cert manager as the organization, um, whatever it was, I don't think that's necessarily correct, at least from my understanding. Um, so, yeah, that was my feeling. On that i do agree though it's not very helpful <laughs> to say that <laughs> we, we changed it in the past because reasons but well, i'm not going to say what the reasons are it's not particularly helpful yeah that some some more context would be good but um yeah like like it doesn't it doesn't matter a huge amount <laughs> cheers see ya. It, it doesn't matter a huge amount and if this didn't make it into uh 1.3 is that the next release uh, that's yeah it's no no big deal but i, I will uh maybe in the few hour working hours that i've got this week uh and uh training 
then I, I, I can take a look at the other approach and see if it sort of uh, falls out for me. I, I suspect my stumbling block there will be because I'd actually be generating a new Kubernetes object in the event um, thing. Uh, the testing will change there because you have to check that you created it correctly. And I'm sure like, that is done plenty of places inside the code base, but uh, th there's a different kind of testing methodology needed for that. So there's a, a new learning block for me there. Um, again. So, yeah, so events aren't, they, I think they're technically Kubernetes resources, I guess, but they're not real resources. Um, so they're more, a lot more malleable, not malleable, but um, yeah, ephemeral, transient, transient. transient. Thank you, <laughs> better word. Um, so, um, yeah, they're like one-shot resources. You never really check the, you don't check the whether they're errored or not, and all these other kind of things. They're like best effort, and they are yeah attached to another kind of parent resource. Um, and they can disappear super, at any point in time. Yeah, they get garbage collected. Um, in an undefined way, I guess, from the user's right. perspective. Um, but they're super simple to check in tests, at least, in our testing framework. I can try and... Um, you can even look at Mail's recent PR, mm. where it has an expected event test. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds super useful. I, I did quickly try to look at, look it up this morning, and like searching Kubernetes event doesn't really produce anything particularly useful. Um, in terms of Google results. So yeah, if anyone can point me at some docs, that would be, that'd be helpful. Well, I, said, I, did, I did kubectl get events and saw that that was a thing. I was like, ah, oh, they're just resources. So if, if they're not just resources, that would be good to know. I guess they are, yeah, but yeah. Like, they're like metadata of resources. Sure. They don't have an object meta, or do they? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they don't. They don't follow the same like. But but it is still stored on in etcd, so maybe it's just like events API. Yeah, they do have an object meta. Oh, okay. Yeah. Would would that would it potentially create an issue if someone was like going completely wild and generating a ton of self signed issuers? Would they run the risk of uh, like exhausting etcd or something? No, so events are garbage collected. So they'd, it'd be removed mm -hmm. in some time frame, wh whatever that would be. Yeah, they're garbage collected quite aggressively. Um, cool. And I imagine they're definitely with time, but uh, I imagine probably with space as well, if that's the thing. I think the API also coalesces similar events. I don't know if that has any, I don't know if it actually happens in NCD or whether it's just some thing that happens as a result of doing the query, though. Sure. Uh, cool. That's much appreciated. I apologize for turning it into Ashley's Kubernetes learning hour. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. Last, last agenda item, then? Or no, someone's added one while I wasn't looking. So. Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, um, Three seven eight eight. Do you want to move that above? Oops. Yeah. So it's just uh, we uh, since everybody was already this morning there. Uh, it's I don't have anything to add. It's just I'm really excited to get my first the first PR I opened in this repository is soon to be merged, maybe. And I'm, uh, I reviewed it. I was happy, happy with it. But then you have you have a suggestion for us for a single grammar error from uh, Joseph Sar, from Josh Sar. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was Great. So, sorry. What did you say? Did you say my name? No. No. no, no, no sorry. The same per the person that keeps. Making PRs with minor uh, spelling yeah, spelling yeah. mistakes is also called Josh. Ah, Josh Saref. Yeah, the 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 presumed bot, <laughs> the person who we thought was a bot, but he's not great guy. He's a great guy. He's a great person. <laughs> I mean, maybe you can be a bot and a great person. 
Also. <laughs> Uh, I guess we can move on to the, oh, no, sorry, 2882868. Yeah, I just quickly added that because that was supposed to go into the into the one three milestone. That's the one I picked up and have been working on forever. I hope I'll like finish it probably today. It's like the stuck orders thing that I've actually never seen happening in real life, but occasionally people have complained about that. So hopefully at all ease some pain. Okay. Oh, we have another item. <laughs> it keeps fixing, piling fixing, on. Fixing Darwin on 64. Um, so actually. Should I create an issue for that? Or is there already an issue? There is no issue. You should, because then we can add the comments to it. So I think as part of that, we need to update a bunch of things, including Go 116, and Airbase also been upgrading the version of Basil that we used to build in the background. So if you make an issue, we can just put comments on it saying, this is happening, this is happening. I'll log an issue tomorrow. Uh, till then, is, does someone know of a workaround like, which I can use? Because like, I was working on the issue which Richard mentioned, but even that gets blocked due to this, partially. I look. I looked a bit whether you can run the... Oh my god, I can hear echo when I'm talking. <laughs> yeah. uh, I looked a bit if you can run it without Bazel, but I think it's not that straightforward. If it's, I don't think it's possible to run end-to-end -end test setup from our current repo without Bazel. Just run the scripts, because we use Bazel to build all the add-ons, like Pebble, etc. So I think it would be... But like, Bazel itself got installed perfectly, so... I am not sure like where the problem is exactly. Because we use just we have like predefined platforms and there is no arm between those, I think. And for some reason the platform tag doesn't work for you. Specifically with uh sorry Ash, can you mute yourself? Thank you. Um specifically with Sorry I'm, I'm distracted now. <laughs> Specifically with ARM M1, that's that is a really new thing with Go, right? They, they haven't supported um, Apple M1. Go 1.6 supports yeah. the latest Go supports, yeah. Yeah, cool. It's also about the Bazel Go rules supporting it. We need to update Bazel Go rules, which I tried to do, but it was there are there are some syntax changes and like the Gazelle thingy that we use for generating some files was also not happy. So it's just, it needs to be done, but it's not that straightforward as you would think. I'm surprised to learn that Bazel is a thing that gets in the way of this. Like I, I, I totally believe that it would be, but I'm surprised that that's a thing that it has an issue with. Because we use Bazel to like to pull down Go repositories and do like like the whole Go tool chain comes from Bazel, from Bazel rules, and it will be platform specific. And in our case, I think we have predefined set of platforms between which there is no arm. But I think that there is another issue as well, which I'm not sure about. Yeah, we just have Darwin in, I mean x86. Darwin and x84. That's and everything we have. X. But like the thing is that it should be so. So what James said was that R should be able to build the target for AMD sixty four, and it would run on his machine because of Rosetta apparently like can can run it, but it still doesn't work for him. So I you mean Darwin did actually try running using Rosetta. I was running it natively. I know, but you couldn't even build. You couldn't even build with the platform flag for AMD64, so I don't know why. No, so uh, like the terminal can be run Rosetta mode, and I could try installing Bazel that way. So maybe yeah. that's what he was referring to, but I'm not entirely sure on the Rosetta thing I think, myself. I think just to get unlocked, you would run your terminal through Rosetta and then install the. Darwin AMD64 version of Bazel and then build it from within the Rosetta terminal. I think it would work. It would just be a little bit slower. But we will fix 
like we'll try and update Basil. Although we will also maybe try and remove Basil because Kuma <laughs> ditched it already. <laughs> Mixed feelings. <laughs> Again, it's very little benefit for a pure Go project hmm. to use Basil. With the benefit we it's lose. Forever sing. The benefit we lose is completely reproducible builds. And I don't know if we actually care about that at all. I, I certainly care about them, but not enough to keep on using Basil over, say, Make. I think Make would be enough of an improvement to make up for that. And it's not that hard with Go to get reproducible build. Yeah, I mean, Basil makes everything down to each individual tool you use completely into reproducible. <laughs> Yeah, but then we have like a ton of those external tools with hard coded versions into our code base, and some of them are like two, three years old because. Yes, I don't mm. understand how I have to how I have to compile Protobuf from source every other time. <laughs> I think that's because I use the edited version of Protobuf. I tried to update it, but also some syntax has changed, so it didn't go that straight. <laughs> but I'm just gonna like do it later. Yeah. There is actually one thing that I noticed when we run our end-to-end -end tests in CI. Basil actually caches the results, so we don't run them all the time. And that kind of surprised me. Like I didn't, I didn't expect that. That's how we would want to do it. I think James finally set it up to use a cache, proper cache in CI, but I don't know anything about it. What what are we gaining uh, in caching? Just just wondering, what what do we gain in because the build doesn't take that much. Like it's. Or is it, sorry, is it caching the tests? Yeah, Sweet. the tests. Oh. Like if you look at the tests, you see cached for each one of them almost. Ah, the like the gold cache thing. Okay. No, okay, the Bezel yes. cache, I think. No. Yeah, yeah. So Bezel has the same thing as Go has. I mean, the same mechanism, caching. But then oh, I was yeah, wondering, useful. like, what's the point in running periodical tests if they are cached anyway? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Or maybe I'm not understanding some something there as well. I'm pretty sure the end-to-end -end tests aren't cached because it does the TDP every time. Oh, but that that's failed because it fails, I guess. No, I don't know. I guess we need to investigate, uh, learn more about our build system. <laughs> oh, there's a lot. Okay, and a lot needs to be done because we're running a really old version of Prowl as well. But the only, I think only James understood it completely, and so he's responsible for it. So it's a bit of a uh, hmm. bit of a difficult undertaking. Okay, because it it, I mean, it mostly works. So it's like low priority on every, it's low on everyone's priority list. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's the same for Basil. Like it works, so <laughs> why not? Why bother? Yeah, there's minor, minor, minor side effects, such as like you have proto buffing recompiled in your machine, but that's okay. But uh, that's on our side. That's the developer side, and maybe it's a good transition to the next thing, the vision about cert managed project, what we want. Because like having Basil and is a, is a, is a big struggle for for people to like use the project, play with it, uh, get started. Yeah, and someone, we have someone a proof here. <laughs> when when Key.io was down, someone tried to build a set manager, and they couldn't build it. And I was like, well, I can build it, so I don't know how to help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so do we want to move on to the last item? I think so. Otherwise, we'll just talk for ages. I'm, I'm dying of Zoom fatigue already. Ah, uh, sorry. So <laughs> a, a couple of a seconds. Just so we discussed during the whatever uh, the course we had this afternoon. The whole day we had a course, and we discussed in the last minutes. We discussed the lack of vision, or like we don't really know where we're going with the projects. The at least, so on the Jetstack side, on the enterprise side, we have a, a clear vision of where things should be going. But on the open source side, we have less of a vision. We don't have, I, I don't have, 
I don't know the vision, our like where we're heading and what we want to be going towards. And so I, I presented in few words what I wished we could be heading towards. And also Jake uh, said his vision, I think. So I guess I can start with what I I wish we could uh, do with the projects. I'm, I'm more on the community side and I wish more people could join us. So one, yeah, so make sure as many, so contributing to search matter is enormously hard uh, because Kubernetes is hard and you have to learn Go. And it, so, yeah, it's challenging. So anything that can lower the pain uh, to contribute is great. And for example, Arsh shared what this video, this video from uh, who, I can't remember the name, that Marcel presents. Yeah, Marcel, yeah. He actually is on the Cert Manager Dev channel, I think, or Cert Manager channel. So that's one action that I want to take. So my, my vision is, uh, like Marja was doing previously, make sure Cert Manager stays as a like great place for people to contribute. And they want to contribute because the place is great. And not all, it's not only because they want to scratch an itch, it's also because they feel uh, like it's a great, uh, like so, so it's something that they want to uh, be involved with. Okay, that, that was my vision. I don't have much. Uh, Jake, do you want to share the, like? Yeah, well, one, maybe it was a tiny bit more concrete. I just don't know how we would get there, but it's similar to, so like to progress through this, to progress through the CNCF kind of project thing, at some point you need to have like 50% of your contributions coming from people that weren't from the company that originally created the project or something like that. I think we should just, yeah, we should aspire to that by making our, like our code base easy to contribute to and having like a more public roadmap and then inviting more. So I think the AWS people turning up is actually quite a good thing for us because like, there's, there's, probably, there's clearly some internal agenda going on for uh, making more open source stuff and it's great, but that's, it can only benefit us, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe, we'll, maybe we will have to think after we release 1.3, we could revisit our we could revisit our public roadmap because we have one. It's just been sitting in the README for since, as it because it was a requirement to go into the CNCF, but no one's touched it. So maybe we could revisit that after we release. Great. Uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, do we have any other like like? Uh, do we have any other thoughts about the vision, about where we want to be heading? Not about the vision, but about the more contributions. I think we would need to have more issues that are actually marked as that we want contributors, because at the moment there aren't too many that are like good first issue or help wanted. So I guess if someone's just like looking for a chance to contribute. It's difficult because most, unless the issue is completely trivial, it's it's hard to get started. I feel. Yeah. 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 It is hard. The, the bug that I took over, the three four four four, is extremely hard. <laughs> but but it's extremely hard. But also, I was helped by Marsha and. And uh, and uh, who James Munley? So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's hard. And he was tagged as a good first issue. <laughs> uh, 
So how can we do to mark more uh, good first issues? That's one thing we could do right now. How can we, because we have been discussing this, but I, I don't know how to do this. I, yeah. For example, the other day I saw a CLI change that we want. Um, I, I think Erbe, you open yeah, the issue. Yeah, install command. I was thinking it could be good if someone wanted to contribute. I don't think it's necessarily, I don't know what's a first issue. Like I think it's an excellent good first issue because there is no prior work to be like you don't have to know prior work and I'm, I'm although just... it might be uh, as as Marsha said a good first issue is an issue that we know can be done like we know it for sure it can be done On it's well hand, identified it is no basal no to do that issue because the way it would be done is you embed the results of building the manifest which is a basal target into the command into the command package so again it's a good first issue but it also requires you to do basal which makes it automatically not a good first issue <laughs> oh, i mean that 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 kind of points a good part of the way right like if, if we made a list of if we brainstormed a list of all of the stuff that could get in the way of someone being able to contribute i guess basal is going to be a pretty big thing that would get in the way of people there so that points towards an easy thing we can do to well, no, easy might not be the right word, but definitely an impactful thing we can do to change the situation. Okay. And there's, there's got to be a lot of other stuff on the list as well. One thing we can do is do another triage party. Mm. Yes. I don't, I don't know if you've heard of this, Ashley, because I don't know. I don't think you've had the opportunity. I, I, I'm guessing I can work out what it means from the two words, but yeah. uh, go, go ahead. But we have an actual utility that's running that will list all the new issues that or the issues that are unloved, and then we can go through and mark them. And we should do this more often as well. So depending on everyone's like call bandwidth, we could tack it onto the end of uh, the release on Friday. I, I, I understand that it's always a struggle to do calls because it basically wastes, like, it feels like you're wasting a lot of time. <laughs> Um, I, I, thinking that given that half of us uh on long calls every day this week like maybe next week we could do something yeah feel free i'm away next week and then josh is oh, also away. sorry I, I didn't know I in that case yeah i, I mean i'm t i'd be totally happy to do it on friday i'm just yeah, I, I don't have to gate it though right um, no, 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 I just like feel free because Mel knows how to do it and everybody knows how to do it. We are doing all for release as well on Friday, though. So. Yeah, I mean, I only wanted to do the release on Friday because I know I'll be here. Right. But someone else could lead it equally. Yeah, do it anytime. But... Um, who wants to create the event? <laughs> or the triage party? Yeah. What time? I don't know. Well, should we play in the recording? Have we finished the agenda items? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Goodbye, YouTube. Bye. Bye. <laughs>